since we're emitting from the teapot, once again I'll mention we have the options to uh, emit from the whole volume, which is similar to using the PT volume of Krakatoa, but it does it directly. You can emit from individual vertices, um, and while I'm doing this, I'll show you some other options. You probably noticed that 251 megabytes of uh, RAM were used to cache those particles. They're not too many particles, but still. If I want to uh, save some space, I can switch this cache uh, option to, for example, only five or every 10th frame. And if I simulate now, um, I'm going to emit on from all the vertices, and the cache is actually displaying that it's caching only every 10th frame, and only 27 megabytes of RAM were used. So if you have millions of particles to cache, and you want to just do a preview, right now, the emission is happening every 10 frames, so that 10, every 10 frames there will be a pop in the emission, but the actual uh, interpolation of the particles, so I'll remove the deletion, and just watch that motion. Uh, my particles will be interpolated using uh, cubic interpolation based on the closest two frames, and the, the motion will be very plausible and very, very close to the same motion if I had saved each frame. So that's relatively useful, and you can see how the emission is currently going only from individual vertices, and of course I could select uh, the actual um, emitter, which is the teapot. I can even right-click here and say I want to select this object to get quickly to it. And I could add a, for example, mesh select modifier on top, go into vertex mode, or go to the first frame where we see more. I'll select a few of the vertices, enable soft selection. Now a fraction of the teapot is selected. And on top, in order to keep that, I have to add a turn to mesh, which keeps the selection, but goes into object mode. Go back to stalk, and now we'll be emitting from the teapot, but from the vertex of selection. If I simulate now, uh, my uh, emission should be going only mostly from the right side, and there is a hole here, because uh, I am uh, emitting only uh, with a higher probability from the uh, vertices that have full selection, and much less probability from the ones that are not selected. If I switch only to uh, um, for example, edges, it will also take the edges and their vertices, soft selection, for example, uh, into account. So if I simulate now, I will be emitting on the side of the teapot, only from, from the actual edges. I should probably zoom a little bit closer and probably even create more particles, so it's obvious, but you'll probably see on the first frames uh, when because I'm doing a first 10, the first frame where it's emitting is number 10. Let me simulate this again with every frame, and that will be much more obvious. And let's delete those guys. So, um, simulate every frame, run the simulation. Now on the first frames, we'll start seeing particles em emitted from the actual edges. And uh, if I was emitting from the vertices, and for, from each vertex, regardless of um, uh, the soft selection. I can also uh, set a value that lets me distribute uh, particles. If I have more particles than I have vertices, I can em emit in a spherical region around each vertex, especially if simulating a lot of particles. I'll hit simulate and I'll stop the simulation early, and now you can see these clumps of particles emitted around the vertices, and then they will be affected by uh, the velocities from the film effect simulation. Uh, so you have various ways to uh, define where they appear and how they appear, and if you have more particles than vertices, and one vertex has to give birth to more than one uh, particle, in that case you can distribute them randomly around. Uh, there are various ways to actually define the emission. If I, for example, create uh, another uh, object, for example, like a geosphere close by, uh, and I'll move it somewhere around, and I'll pick it as uh, yet another source. You'll notice that I can have as many sources as I want. I'll uh, pick this geosphere, and uh, now my simulation will be distributing 50% of the emission to the vertices of this object, and the other 50% to the surface of this object. So I can have each emitter set to different settings, and you can control using the number, which is typically the rate. Right now we're saying that the total rate will be defined here, but the rate per object will be split as percentage. So if I go here for this object and say 200 particles, 
it will actually mean 66 to 33 percent. I can go and say no, I want actually to split equally no matter what, so if I enter here 10,000, 5,000 will come from the one and 5,000 from the other. The top one is not emitting, so that number doesn't really matter. I can say the total rates and each source will emit 10,000, or I can go and say ignore this and just use 200 from this guy and 100 from this guy, the exact absolute value, so 30,000 will be created in the last frame. Uh, that means if I hit simulate now, both emitters should be creating particles, but obviously these particles won't do that much because there is not enough, well, there is enough, some, but not very interesting motion from fume effects in that place, so most of the particles sitting around. 